Today we're going to talk about the Brynizer method right inside of Lightroom, how to turn this photograph into this one. Let's start the show. So now uh, I will walk you through this process, how I do that on how I turn this one right here into this photograph. But essentially what I did, just so you kind of see the process, I like this with a, um, a 85 because I love the compression of all of this instead of a 35. Now 35 is more intimate and all those things, 85 has good compression. So started with right in the middle, 85, focused on them. So I didn't focus anywhere else, I focused directly on them. Uh, and then from there, I did not change my focus again. So it's really important that you don't have half shutter push down focus uh, on your camera. You wanna make sure that it's just like back button focus. So had the back button, fo button focus on them. And then what I ended up doing was shooting around them, like making a large circle. So you can see from here to here, to here, to here, uh, and essentially I just went around in a circle. So you can see how that circle goes, never changing my focus. You can see it's still focused on them. So I did all of this from in the side of the camera. Good, good, good. And then ended right back to where it is there. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make sure that I edit it exactly how I wanted. So this is my edit. That looks good for me, like where I can come in here. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna go right back to the beginning one, which is right here and I'm gonna control command S, bring up this, and I'm gonna make sure that they all are edited the same. So synchronize that right there. So it's a very similar edit. So you see all the, some of those change, they change colors so that they can make sure that it's consistent across the board. It's in photo, photo merge, and then go to panorama, boom, there it is. So I'm gonna click on that, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna put that stuff together for me. Now, if you do spherical, spherical can work, but sometimes it, it morphs on the end, um, so I tend to go with perspective because it shoots it, it, it puts it together, creates the panorama as if it was at my perspective photographing. And so I leave it at perspective uh, and then we just kind of wait for it to load. All right, so this is what it looks like right here. And for the sake of you seeing what it looks like um, within here, because I actually might go with spherical. So I'm gonna go ahead to go um, perspective and then I'm gonna show you guys, it's gonna remerge it, but I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like in spherical. Okay, now you see the difference where it kind of like bows out, um, looks a little bit different, and I kind of like that look, so I'm gonna go with that bowed out. Nah, nope, I think I'm gonna go with spherical, or perspective. Uh, nope, I'm gonna go with spherical. Okay, okay. All right, now it's done, and for like a 13 photo panorama, it took about a minute and a half. So we've got this pano, looks like this, uh, once it loads. And now what I wanna do is immediately I'm gonna come in here and crop to what I think uh, I like a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead, push R, crop that in. Uh, it's just a four by six. So I'll crop it into a four by six, bring that junk down like so. So I'm gonna expose for them right in here. Now what I'm gonna do is take my radial tool and I'm going to bring that into them right in here to probably come in and darken plus maybe. Okay, Darken Plus looks decent, and I'm gonna see where my radial tool is. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the brush, like while I'm still on this radial tool right here, I make sure this is, so click on it, make sure you click on this one, click on the brush, and then what I'm gonna do is make sure my flow is still high. I'm going to come in and I'm going to bring, I'm going to feel it fill in. You see it filling in right in here? And that works well, I like that. So now I have a good, and generally I'll do this like on their face to make sure that there's nothing on their face there. So now I have a pretty good outline of them. Uh, and now I'm gonna adjust like my white balance. So I like it to be a little bit cooler because of how I think it actually looked pretty cool in this area. So, but I, what I don't want is I don't want them to look cooler. So I'm gonna come here, get my white balance the way I want it on their faces. So like that looks good. I might bring up my Contrast a bit. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm gonna really contrast this thing. Also, I like using auto white balance because auto white balance will get the tint right generally. And then from there, I will adjust the temperature. Now, I will take go back into this radio filter and I'm actually going to adjust the outside of this photo to be a little more blue. Like that looks really cool. That blue looks awesome. But they're not changing. It's not changing their temperature, which is what I like. 
Now, what I also see is that there's a little bit of like orange. So like this is very blue, but this is a little bit more orange. And I think that's because the sunset was on our left. So the sun was coming off of the edge of this mirror here. So I'm going to take in my, um, what I, my gradient filter here. Oh, not that. Uh, and I'm going to bring the gradient filter over. Boom. I'm actually, and I'm also going to make the gradient filter sharper. So I'm going to make that edge pretty sharp by bringing in this back line. Boom. Something like that. Okay. And then from there, I don't want this and I don't want the sky or the ground to be affected. So I'm going to go to my brush and I'm going to come to erase down here. And I'm just going to erase out the bottom portion and the top portion of this photograph. So those things don't get affected by the white balance. So something like that looks good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bump up the heat on there. That was a little much. So let's come down here. That looks a little bit better. I might have that go out a little bit more like like that. Okay, and that looks pretty clean. So from here, bump up that contrast because I like that contrast to be nice and high like that. I'll probably bring up the shadows a tad bit. So now you guys get a good little idea of how to use the Brenizer method from within your within Lightroom. Don't have to use any external apps. Also, how to use the radio filter correctly uh, and then also how to use that gradient filter. So went through a bunch of good things here uh, and then you saw the final product going from this photo right here which was just 185 vertical photograph. So going from that into an 85 horizontal while still keeping that compression and while still getting that nice 35 focal length, which is cool with an 85 compression. That's why I mostly do it. So hope that was helpful for you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure that you mash that like button. Uh, you subscribe for all the updates because I'm going to be doing this weekly. And uh, you guys just keep up with it. So thanks so much. Hope you have an amazing day.